What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another preview for Submechanophobia. Yesterday, we went through the first part of the preview, so make sure that you go and watch that video or read the preview if you haven't uh, seen that already. Uh, we got an extended preview today on Overdrive.com, and uh, yeah, let's start from here. So, uh, basically, Caden has been down... Um, to try and fix the mermaid or whatever, and he's come back up, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I can't really remember that much, to be fair. <laughs> um, so, hey, Caden. Caden swiveled around to see his co-worker, Roy, walking toward him. Nearly a decade and a half older than Caden, Roy always looked like he had just rolled out of bed with dark hair that always stuck up in crazy directions. His uniform is usually too small and wrinkled. You wouldn't know, by, know it by his appearance, but Roy managed to be an all-star employee at the water park. He knew how to run every game booth, cooked a mean hot dog on a stick, and was also the park janitor. When Caden had asked him how he managed to do it all, Roy told him he used to come to Freddy Fa uh, Freddy's Fantasy Water Park as a kid and loved every part of the park experience. This was his dream job. Yeah, Roy? Caden swelled the water tube, checking the levels of chemicals in the kiddie pool at Bonnie's Sea Ponds before any of the little kids jumped in. Roy flung a thumb over his shoulder. Think Hank's down. Caden expelled a weary breath and dumped the small tube of water back into the pool. Hank was the shark with the, with the rust spot in the shape of a hammer on its tail. Hank the Hammer, Roy liked to call him. He'd named the other two sharks, Mac the Muscle and Sly, the latter of whom always managed to sneak around the full sea rocks and plants. Zeus, of course, the sea dragon. Delilah was the mermaid. Frank was the diver and Marco and Polo were the serpents. Right. <laughs> Got it, thanks. Roy scratched at the whiskers on his chin. One job I couldn't land here at the park was the was the techie one. Not the best with puzzles. Don't think I could swim the air tank either. Caden shrugged. You do everything else here, Roy. You had to leave a job for someone else. Roy grinned, showing yellow teeth, and, ex and expelled a snorting laugh that was unique to him. Yeah, I guess I had to leave something for you to do. What I wouldn't give to have your job, though, swimming around with Zeus and Delilah... Now that would be mind-blowing. Caden let out a nervous laugh. Yeah. Okay, buddy, you go do your thing. I'll make the announcement that the mech aquarium and ferry boats will be down for a bit. Get Hank back up and running with the rest of them. Thanks, will do. Caden gave him a thumbs up, put away the water testing kit, and took off toward the mech aquarium. He walked by a few patrons, or pat patrons, yeah, in the park. The day was slightly overcast, but the sun usually burned away the gloom at lunch. A couple of kids were holding bright balloons as they ran around. Parents were scolding the children not to run. A few seagulls were flying above, spying for dropped food, and the coo of pigeons could be heard along with the park music playing through the speakers. No way, Caden Wachowski, you're working here. Um, Caden came to a halt. Oh no. Unfortunately, he knew that voice. He turned around to see his old classmate, Daryl Cunningham, with Yasmin Mendoza and a little girl at her side. It had been a year since they'd graduated and Caden had never hoped to see his nemesis again, but it was hard to avoid anyone in Meadow Brook. Caden gave a fake smile and, co and combed a nervous hand through the top of his hair. Daryl, hey, Yasmin, how's it going? Hi, Caden, we didn't know you worked here, Yasmin said with a toss of her wavy black hair. That's cool. Are you kidding me? Daryl spat out. A water park was the last place I thought Caden Wachowski would turn up. Daryl hadn't changed a bit. Honey blonde hair, slim and well-dressed. But what you couldn't see from looking at him was his mean streak. Daryl had instigated many rounds of the name-calling, shoves and beatings that Caden had suffered over the years, all because Caden's stupid phobia that had only acted up on that one field trip. Kids never forgot that kind of stuff. Caden looked at the little girl, who was sucking on a lollipop. Who's this? Yasmin put her hand on her shoulder. My little sister, Marie. We brought her to the park to see the sea creatures, but looks like you guys are shutting it down. Figures, Daryl said with a sneer. This place is such a dump. Why'd they, why they even open? The mega pe- Whoa! Whoa! Did we just get that reveal? The mega pizza plexes are so much better. I went to one by our school. It puts this place to shame. What? What? Okay, okay. That's that's so cool. Okay, so a little bit of context. Um, yesterday I was in my Discord server and we were talking about where Meadowbrook 
where Meadow Brooks is or whatever. Uh, and people said there was one in California. Apparently, it's like a very popular place name. But also, um, I'm not going to spoil it because Somnophobia isn't out. But in Somnophobia, there's a detail that says that it could be in California. Okay. And that is nowhere near Utah, of course, where the Pizzaplex is in the games. So that's like, is it confirmation that the Mega Pizzaplex in the games isn't the same one as the one in Somnophobia? But now we know that there are multiple Pizzaplexes or me multiple Mega Pizzaplexes. Okay. Okay. So the canonicity of some of these stories is going to be very difficult to uh, piece together. But that's really cool. That's an amazing reveal, actually. That's really cool. Uh, then Daryl ho hocked a loogie and spat it on the ground. Yeah, well, Kanan said, hopefully it won't be closed too long. Just have to get in the tank and restart one of the animatronics. He looked at Marie. Then you'll be able to see them swim around again, okay? Daryl's eyes widened with a twist of his mouth. Wait, what? You're the technician here? Holy cow, now I really must be dreaming. You hear this, Yasmin? Kanan gets in the actual water to fix the animatronics. Is there a puddle under your feet? Then he snickered, his shoulders bunching up like he, uh, like when he laughed at Caden in school. He must have woken up in a different reality today. Wait till I tell the guys. Caden crossed his arms as frustration tightened his fists. Yeah, well, people change. Got to start making a living. What are you doing these days, Daryl? Daryl straightened his shoulders and very slightly stuck out his skinny chest. Came down for the three-day weekend from school. Yasmin and I both got into the same university. We're going to school to get real jobs after we graduate. Caden shrugged. Yeah, well, school's not for everyone. More like, not everyone's smart enough. Right, Wachowski? Caden frowned at him. I was sorry to hear about your grandmother, Caden. Yasmin cut in, her brown eyes sincere. Yasmin was one of the kids who'd actually been nice to him, but she'd always hung out with Daryl and a group of jerks, so he always steered clear of her too. Thanks, she's doing okay now. There are people watching her around the clock. He glanced around the park and pretended to, uh, to see Martin. There's the boss. Well, I gotta get back to work. Nice seeing you, Yasmin said, and Kanan took off as fast as he could. Don't get eaten by the animatronics, Daryl called out, snickering. And be sure to use the bathroom first. Ha 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 ha. Kanan just shook his head, seething with irritation. Kanan rubbed at his chin, studying the me mech aquarium from outside of the glass. It was definitely Hank the Hammer that was down. In fact, the animatronic was flipped over, floating in the middle of the tank like a dead fish. How the heck did that happen? He wanted to know. And how is he going to flip Hank over again? He rubbed a hand down his face. He took a couple of big breaths and climbed up the ladder to the platform. Breathe in, breathe out. Man, he felt a little nauseated about the idea of going back in again. His palms were even beginning to sweat. But this was his job. A job he probably wouldn't have taken if he had realized just how many times the mechanical critters would break down. But there weren't that many jobs for fresh out of high school mechanics within driving distance of Graham's house. And so he'd taken what he could get and hoped that facing his deepest fears daily would somehow allow him to overcome the phobia. So far, it was just making it worse. He stepped up and onto the platform and walked over to the power lever to shut off the main power. He heard the vibration of the tank shift and settled to off. Then he pushed the button to open the tarp as he got his diving gear on. He walked around the mech aquarium trying to find the best pathway down to avoid the other animatronics. Unfortunately, this time the machines seemed to be spread out all over and at every angle. He would have to swim around at least one of them to get to Hank. Great. He blew out a frustrated breath. Come on, I can do this. There's nothing to worry about. He figured the lesser evil was to swim through some random fish in order to get to Hank. Caden sat down on the edge with his gear on, slipped on his goggles, put in his breathing regulator and slid into the cold water. He first swam above the other two sharks a few feet below him. Mac the Muscle was... The, the Muscle? Oh yeah, Mac, Mac the Muscle was dark blue and the biggest of the, of the three. Swimming over its large body sent a shiver down Caden's back. Sly was light blue and smaller with beady eyes and a small tail. Hank was just plain grey. Caden kicked down towards the school of fish and pushed through them. Each time he brushed against one it was like being zapped with dread. He broke through the walls of fish with his heart pounding and swam over to Hank. Unfortunately, with Hank upside down, Caden couldn't reach the panel on the back from there. He would have to swim under the shark to fix him. Sheesh, it was like every time he got into the tank, there was some other obstacle to overcome. 
Kanan swam under the shark and, like a scaredy cat, jerked back out again. His breathing was rushed and erratic. The pressure of having the mechanical shark over him freaked him out. Breathe in, breathe out. He chanted in his head as he tried to calm himself. Kanan looked out through the mech aquarium and noticed the visitors weren't paying much attention to the tank. Thank goodness. He caught something in the side of his vision and whirled around to spot Zeus, the sea dragon, a few feet away, with its mouth si slightly open. Where the heck had he come from? Not only was the sea dragon the biggest animatronic, but it was also the scariest. Small clawed hands and feet were attached to the large body. Wings jutted from the sides of its reptilian body. Sharp teeth speared out from its huge jaw. Just looking at the creature from outside the tank could, cr could trigger one of Caden's panic attacks if he stared at it too long. He didn't remember seeing Zeus anywhere near Hank, but he'd been so worried about getting to Hank, maybe he hadn't noticed before. Who knew? His mind was all over the place. Just get the job done. Quickly, he shifted under Hank, opened the panel with a screwdriver and focused on problem solving. He checked the wires, fiddled with them, making sure nothing came loose, then pushed the reset button. Hank shuddered and jerked its tail. Caden lurched back, waiting for the shark to settle back down, and then rushed to shut the panel and seal it closed. He turned to swim up the surface, but came to a stop. Zeus was now floating right in front of him. Caden swam quickly back from Zeus until he crashed into something hard. Caden checked behind him. He collided into a wall of sea rock. He jerked his attention back to Zeus. Somehow the terrifying sea dragon was even closer to Caden, sending a tremor vibrating through his whole body. But how? The power was off. There was no way the sea dragon could move without the power on. It was all metal. It, if it were to move at all, it would only be because a cable had snapped and it had sunk to the bottom. How did it get so close? What the heck's going on? Caden watched the sea dragon. It got even closer. Oh no. Caden looked around, scanning for a way out. The dragon came to an abrupt stop right at Caden's head, pinning him to the wall. The tip of its scaled snout was directly in front of Caden's face. The huge, sharp teeth were close enough to chomp him. Caden wanted to scream. His chest was rising up and down. His back was glued to the sea wall. He tried not to suck in too much air and make himself dizzy. He was going to die. He was absolutely frozen with terror. Someone help me! Caden wanted to look anywhere else, but he found himself staring into the dragon's open mouth. It wasn't looking so good. Some of the teeth were broken off. The green paint on the scales had rubbed off of the areas along its head. Uh, black oil had stained the side of its mouth where, over the years, and the dimness of the tank, it reminded Caden of dried blood. He didn't know how long he was frozen, pinned against the sea rock by the animatronic. Caden finally noticed some type of dirty wiring hanging out of the bottom teeth. Focus on the wire, focus on the technical, he told himself. I can fix this. Caden stared at the wire until the terror clawing at his insides eased a little. His pulse fluttered and his stomach felt like it was turning over in his gut. Just fix it now so you don't have to fix it later. For a moment he couldn't move, so he started to picture the inner workings of the animatronics, reminding himself that they were indeed machines, powerless. Hand shaking, he slowly reached out toward the wiring that floated in the water. The material was actually soft and malleable, like string. Caden pulled, but it was stuck between the teeth. He shut his eyes and yanked. Something had drifted out of the sea dragon. He realised it wasn't a wire, but a shoelace. He pulled out a little kid's shoe that was covered in black oil from Zeus's huge mouth. That night, Caden dreamed he was back in second grade on a field trip to an amusement park. He had been assigned to a group with Daryl, Peter, Sally and Tony, chaperoned by Mrs. Thompson. Once they got to the park, the beginning of the trip had been pretty fun. They rode a few rides and got to play games. Caden liked the spinning cups his be the best. His friend Daryl liked the big swings. They each had cotton candy and a hot dog. He couldn't wait to tell Grams how much he was having. Next on the itinerary... In itinerary was a trip on the submarine ride. It wasn't actually a submarine, but a boat that you stepped down into in order to see all the underwater sea life through the viewing glass as it sailed around a large pond. Tinny music played through a speaker. Caden felt a little nervous stepping down into the glass boat. His stomach turned over like it was upset. His palms began to sweat looking at the greenish murky water surrounding the boat. He didn't feel good about being in the boat, but he had to stay with his group. He wanted to go home. The boat rocked below his feet. Fake kelp waved from side to side in the water, but the water wasn't very clear through the viewing glass. It was cloudy and speckled with dirt. This is so cool, 
Daryl said, pointing all around. Isn't it cool? The other kids agreed and ooed at the little fish that swam past the glass. Caden didn't see anything cool about it at all. Daryl grabbed Caden's arm and pulled him over to the glass. Look, Caden, isn't it neat? It's like we're underwater. When I grow up, I'm going to live in a submarine. It's going to be so awesome. Do you want to live in a submarine too? Um, Caden spotted something in the cloudy water through the glass. He squinted. He watched the kelp shift back and forth. Something was moving as the boat drifted closer. Caden felt his heart pound. He pointed toward the glass. Um... His hand curled into a fist at his side. A large whale animatronic popped out through the long strands of kelp. Its mouth opened super wide. Its teeth were blackened and brown. Its throat was deep and dark, and it was big enough to swallow Caden whole. Caden's breath clogged in his throat. Daryl pulled him close to the glass, and Caden ripped his arm away and leaped back. He held his breath for so long, he thought he'd pass out. He let out his breath, then sucked in a big gulp of air and realised the and released the biggest stream, scream he'd ever shouted in his life. He screeched as if he were being attacked, tortured, murdered, like he was being eaten alive. Mrs. Thompson, Daryl, and the other kids tried to calm him down, but all he saw was the mechanical wail that ignited pure terror within him. Mrs. Thompson grabbed him by the shoulders. Her face was pale, her eyes were wide. Caden, stop this right now! Caden jerked away, screaming. He knocked into some kind of emergency switch on the wall of the boat and a loud alarm sounded over the static radio, piercing everyone's ears. The kids slapped their hands against the sides of their heads. The boat jerked and halted. The whale froze, mouth gaping as the boat stopped. Oh my gosh, how long is this preview? Are you kidding me? That's... <laughs> there's a lot going... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Mrs. Thompson grabbed Caden again, blocking... Uh, Something's happening. Okay. Mrs. Thompson grabbed Caden again, blocking his view of the water. Caden, please stop. You're okay. Stop screaming. Please, someone turn off that alarm. Caden finally quieted. His entire body shook. His chest moved up and down with harsh breaths. His throat burned from screaming so loudly. Tears ran down his face and snot ran out of his nose. He slowly regained his senses, remembering where he was and what was happening. What was happening was that Daryl was pointing at him. Look, Caden peed his pants! Ha ha ha! The kids began to chant. Caden looked down to see, if a pud to see a puddle at his feet as he heard the kids laughing at him. I see, I see. Ha 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 ha! Caden jerked awake in his bed, covered with a sheen of sweat. His sheet was stuck to his skin, so he peeled it off and sat up. He checked to make sure he hadn't literally wet his pants and then scrubbed at his face. Thank goodness he'd been, he'd been better able to control his bodily fluids as he got older. He looked at the clock. It was 3.03am. His mouth was parched, so he got up, stepped around the pile of clothes on the floor, and walked out of his bedroom and down the narrow hallway to the kitchen. He rolled his stiff neck and stretched his arms out, yawning. The old wooden floors creaked under his feet. Graham's place was a two-bedroom home, wallpapered with tiny pink flowers. Her furniture dated back to the 70s. The matching brown and orange couch and recliner sported knitted do doilies. There were piles of newspapers and magazines on the floor and on the coffee table. Baskets of yarn and unfinished knitting projects were placed around the living room. Her kitchen counters were avocado green, with, uh, which clashed with the yellow linoleum. Even the dishes in the cupboards were old. Sometimes Caden felt like he lived in a museum. Friends never came over to hang out so he never felt embarrassed by the out-of-date decor. The truth is, uh, Graham's house had, n had been a comfortable and safe haven for him, away from the teasing kids and the feeling of being an outsider. When he stepped inside, the outside world faded away. The next day, he would have to step outside again and face a different reality at school. He'd made a couple of friends over the years, both new kids, but one had moved away and the other had joined in the teasing after a while. Through the years at school, Caden had learned to disappear from his world. He'd found safe places in uh, middle and high, sc high schools, mostly in the welding workshops or mechanics class. Places he could duck away from Daryl and his per se, uh, in, um, in between classes and after school, unlike the, until the other kids cleared out and went home. I'm not very good at reading today, I'm sorry. He never felt lonely. Being alone had become second nature to him, just like working on things that needed to be fixed. 
He opened the refrigerator and grabbed a chilled water bottle, twisted off the lid and guzzled down nearly half the water. He shut the fridge and turned to look at the darkened house. Funny how being alone in the dark didn't scare him one bit, and yet being underwater with machines in broad daylight could reduce him to tears. His thoughts drifted to the shoe he'd found yesterday. He'd wrapped the shoe in a plastic bag and tucked it away until the end of the puzzle until the end of the shift and brought it home. He wasn't exactly sure why he had held on to it or why he hadn't turned it in. It was like a piece of a puzzle. He had to work out what it meant. Kanan walked to the front room and found the bag he left on the coffee table. He turned on the light, sat down and pulled a damp shoe out of the bag. The shoe was discoloured but at one time could have been white. Now it was stained with oil and rust. It was small. Maybe from a kid in kindergarten or first grade. That was how old he'd been when his life had changed, when his parents had disappeared. How could a little kid's shoe end up in a closed off water aquarium? How would it be in the mouth of an animatronic dragon? Did Martin Copper know about this? What's your story? He murmured out loud. Then he shook his head. It's just a shoe. He returned it to the bag, turned off the light and went to bed. Hi Roy. Roy was handing out two ice cream cones to a couple of kids from the ice cream booth. Hey there Caden, what's happening? Just feeling like a cone, free snacks was one of the few perks of this job. Sounds good to me too, he sat, he grinned. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Coming right up. Since no one else was in the line for the ice cream, Roy brought out two chocolate soft serves and they sat down on either side of a picnic table. It was the middle of the week so the park was slightly empty. He supposed the park would fill when kids got out of school. Caden had done all his morning work prep and figured he would take some time to pick Roy's brain. Roy licked his cone with gusto. Hey Roy. Huh? So, you used to come to the park before it closed down, right? Interesting. This is going in an interesting direction. I, I see. I see what's happening here. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you see more previews when they eventually come out, if they do. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you then. Goodbye.